Welcome back, my holistic soul sisters. It's me, Mandy Rose, your relational astrologer. Happy 2023. I cannot believe we are here starting a brand new chapter, a brand new playlist of the astrology of 2023. And we're kicking it off with a full moon in Cancer. There are some very interesting things going on with the other planets at the time of this full moon that we'll be discussing. But before we do that, I want to make sure that we really talk about the energy of Cancer so you understand every time we have a full moon in Cancer, what does that mean? What does that represent? We're also going to dive a little bit into the energy of the year ahead and how this full moon is playing into that. And lastly, like I do with all my new and full moon videos, I give you some ritual ideas that you can do around the time of this moon so you can maximize this energy for yourself. So let's go ahead and dive right into the basics of this full moon in Cancer happening on January 6th. The first thing to note about this full moon is that it's happening at 16 degrees of Cancer and it will be occurring at 6.08 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So go ahead and adjust that for your time zone. Now kicking off this video, I want to answer a question that I got this week about astrology and moon cycles, and hopefully it will help you make sense a little bit more of astrology and the cycles within astrology. Now the question was, how can there be a full moon in Cancer when we're in Capricorn season? Now to answer this question, we first have to understand the difference between a new and a full moon. Remember, new moons mean that the sun and the moon are conjunct in the sky. They are in the exact same degree point, they're in the exact same place, and that's why we cannot see the moon. It is dark because the sun is blocking the moon's view from us here on Earth. So that means when we have the sun in Capricorn, like we do right now, we will have one new moon in Capricorn, and then we will have a full moon in Capricorn. But the only way that we can have a full moon is if the sun is directly opposite the moon in the sky, causing it to shine its brightest and to be its fullest. So when we have a sun in Capricorn, in order to have a full moon during that sun season, the moon will have to be directly opposite in the opposite zodiac sign of Capricorn. The opposite zodiac sign of Capricorn is Cancer. You will see that in your 2023 retrograde astrology journal. When I talk about the sun seasons, you will see in the right hand corner, there is a yellow box. And in that yellow box, I list the polarity, the opposite zodiac sign. So every year in Capricorn season, when the sun is in Capricorn, there will be one new moon in Capricorn and one full moon in the exact opposite sign, which is Cancer. That is the full moon we're talking about in today's video. Next month, we will have the sun move into the zodiac sign of Aquarius, where there will be one new moon in Aquarius, but there will also be a full moon in the direct opposite sign of Aquarius, which is Leo. So hopefully that helps you make sense when we're talking about a new moon or a full moon in the astrology journal or within this YouTube channel, when we say the zodiac sign, that is where the moon is located, not the sun. So a full moon in Cancer means that the moon is in Cancer, but the sun is still in Capricorn season, the opposite zodiac sign of Cancer. Okay, so hopefully that helps you make a little bit more sense of the zodiac signs, the cycles, the moon cycles, and so on. So today we are talking about the full moon in Cancer. In order to understand that, first we need to know that it's a full moon. What are full moons? They are chapters of releasing endings and letting go, right? Letting the light shed from the moon for the next two weeks until we get to the point of darkness at the new moon where we can start anew and start manifesting and setting intentions for a new cycle. Full moons are about releasing and letting go. It is the peak, the culmination. The moon cannot get brighter in the sky. In addition to that, we will see things very clearly around full moons, right? Typically you go out at night and it's dark, but when there is a full moon, you can see every stick, every rock, and you can make sure that you're not tripping or fumbling or falling down. And so energetically, full moons represent the same thing for us. They allow us to see things clearly, to heighten and illuminate those areas of our life that sometimes can be dark or shoved beneath the surface. So we need to understand cancer energy to understand what are we supposed to be letting go of? What are we supposed to be releasing at this time? Remember, full moon and cancers happen every single year. 
So when this comes up next year at the same time of year, you will know the things to prepare to let go of. Now, cancer is the energy of the mother. It represents the energy of emotions. It is a water sign. Anytime we have a zodiac sign that is a water element, it represents the flow of emotions, the flow of our feelings, the flow of life, receiving and giving and attracting and doing. It is that flow of back and forth, the rhythm of energy. And cancer being the mother is very much about nurturing, protecting, serving. It is also about loving ourselves, like mothers love, they take care of, right? And so at this time, when we have a full moon, we are really supposed to go inward and love ourselves, mother ourselves, protect ourselves, create a sacred space, And because it's a water energy, this is a time of letting go of emotions, letting go of stuck and stored things that we didn't want to process or maybe we couldn't process previously. But now that the moon is full in the sky, we can see very clearly the emotions and things that we're supposed to let go of because emotions are just energy in motion. And if you take that motion, that energy that you're feeling, and you stuff it down, instead of letting it flow out through tears, through anger, through journaling, through some form of movement, and instead of letting it flow out, you tuck it in, you repress it, you stuff it. Now that energy that's supposed to be in emotion, now that energy that's supposed to be in motion is now stuck and stagnant. And that's how we can create dis-ease in the body. Use this full moon in Cancer as a time to let your emotions flow. Let all those stagnant things and thoughts and feelings out in whatever way. And do it with that mother energy of compassion, of empathy, of love for yourself. Create that sacred space, that sacred time, whatever you might need around this full moon to be able to let those things flow. The other thing around full moon and Cancer is it's all about feeling good. So self-care is a necessity around the full moon and Cancer because you are going to feel more emotional. Things are going to get highlighted and illuminated. You are going to feel ready to let go of things that you've been holding on for so long. And we can only do that when we really take care of ourselves. So I call this the self-care day of the year. You want to do as many self-care activities as you can and give yourself a lot of grace and patience like that mother energy of Cancer. Okay, so that is the energy of Cancer and a full moon in Cancer, which happens every single year. Now, I want to dive into the specifics of this full moon in Cancer happening on January 6th so that you know this year right now the energy we're experiencing in the astrology. Now, before we do that, though, I want to share with you some really fun facts about this specific full moon in Cancer. Number one, in 2023, we are actually going to have two full moons in Cancer. Now, I said earlier in the video that every sun season comes with one new moon and one full moon. So how can we have two full moons in Cancer in one year? Well, that's because we are currently having a full moon in Cancer today, right at the beginning of 2023 on January 6th. And then we are going to have another full moon in Cancer ending out 2023. So the first full moon of 2023 is a full moon in Cancer. And the last full moon in 2023 is also a full moon in Cancer. And you will see in your 2023 retrograde astrology journal that that is happening on December 26th. So that is really going to be the place in our life by the time we get to the end of the year where we're going to have to release some more emotions. We're not going to go into 2024 with all the stuck and stagnant stored things that we've been holding on to in 2023. So I love the fact that we're getting two opportunities, one right at the beginning of the year and one right at the end of the year to release and let go of all of these feelings. So something to know for next year, the day after Christmas, you are going to want to pick your self-care day of the year. You're going to get two of them this year. The second fun fact about this full moon in Cancer is that it's happening at 16 degrees, meaning the sun is at 16 degrees of Capricorn and the moon is at 16 degrees of Cancer. This is the fourth full moon in a row that is happening at 16 degrees. And we're going to have two more, meaning the next two full moons, the full moon in Leo and the full moon in Virgo, the next two months, are also going to be at 16 degrees. Why that is important is that that means we have six full moons in a row happening at 16 degrees. 
When we have six full moons, that means we have hit every single zodiac sign because there are 12 zodiac signs. So in your birth chart, if you have any planets at 16 degrees, one of these last full moons or the next two have impacted you directly and more than once because it's either been a direct hit, an opposition, a square. So 16 degrees, check your birth chart for any planets at that degree point and you've been impacted by this full moon. If you do not, maybe it's at 14, 17, somewhere close to 16, also been impacted. This is something we talk about in the astrology forecast uh, readings that I do, is we look at the new and the full moons of the year and see which ones are direct hits and activations within your chart. So this is a little cheat sheet for you. So I thought that was a really fun fact for 2023. And the last fun fact, which isn't so much a fun fact, but something to keep in mind, is we are at a full moon in Cancer. Like I said, it's the peak, it's the culmination of the cycle that began at the new moon in Cancer way back in 2022 on June 20th. So you're going to want to think back in your life. What was beginning on June 20th of 2022? What in your life was starting fresh or maybe a new chapter? Or maybe it has to do with the Cancer themes like home, family, security, your emotions, self-care, prioritizing yourself, any of those topics that's ruled by Cancer. What was beginning in your life? Because now six months later, we are at the full moon, the peak, the apex, the culmination of that moon cycle. So something to keep in mind and reflect back on your life. So with that, let's go ahead and pull up the chart and talk all about the specifics of January 6th, full moon in Cancer happening in 2023. Now, the first thing I always talk about when we do our full and new moon videos is talking about that moon's planetary ruler. Wherever that full moon or new moon is occurring, whatever zodiac sign has a planetary ruler and cancer is ruled by the moon. So I know that's a little confusing, but essentially when we're looking at the chart here, we see that the sun is in Capricorn, right? At 16 degrees, the moon directly opposite in the sky, making it a full moon at 16 degrees of cancer. The zodiac sign of cancer where the moon is located is ruled by the moon, meaning the moon is at home. It is in its full power, making it such an emotional full moon because cancer is water. Cancer is emotions. And the moon in astrology represents our mood, our temperament, our security, our triggers, our fears, and how we express those things emotionally. So this is a very emotionally charged moon. Now, also talking about the other life coaches, the other planets and what they're up to around this full moon gives us the larger picture, the energetic picture of what we're experiencing and what we're meant to be learning and growing through at the time of this full moon. So let's go ahead and do a little refresher of the current astrology as we start out 2023. Remember, we are in a Mars retrograde, something I've been talking about for so long. This has been active since October 30th, and we are in the home stretch. Mars is about to end his retrograde next week on the 12th. In addition, Mercury is still retrograde as well. Mercury started his retrograde at the end of 2022 on the 29th of December, and he is still retrograde at the time of this full moon. Not only is he retrograde at the time of this full moon, but if we look at the chart here, he is right next to the sun on the day of this full moon. Now remember, Mercury retrogrades is when our mind is literally mush. So we can't think, we can't express, we can't communicate, we can't negotiate, we can't see things clearly because our mind, Mercury, is not forward. It is instead inward. So we're meant to reflect and go back over and reassess things, but not come up with new things. So energetically, at the time of this full moon, not only is it a heightened emotional full moon, a time of releasing and crying and purging and journaling and nurturing ourselves, but this year in 2023, we've got Mars, the planet of our chi, our stamina, our life force retrograde. So we feel like we have no energy. We are irritable. We are cranky. We feel our body physically less active, less energetic. Maybe you're in pain more. Maybe you're having joint issues. Maybe you don't feel the vitality like you normally do. That's Mars, right? That represents our chi. And our mind, Mercury, is also retrograde. So we're not thinking right. So we just feel sluggish and slow and then emotional and triggered. Be very careful at this full moon in Cancer in 2023 about how you're responding and reacting to people. This self-care day is so important. We are not meant to run out and do new things and hang out with people and come up with ideas and, and socialize. Mars in Gemini, socializing less, energetically putting out 
less. Go retrograde. Mercury in Capricorn, goals, success, all the things, right? Capricorn is like climb to the top of the mountain, be the best of the best. Mercury, your mind, we're not trying to be the best. We are trying to go back over things so we can become the best, okay? So that's kind of setting the scene of what's going on here. Mercury is at 17 degrees and the sun, like I said, is at 16 degrees of Capricorn. We call this the Mercury Kazemi. When Mercury backs up through his retrograde and bumps into the sun, this happens at the halfway point of the Mercury retrograde. So at this full moon, we are halfway through Mercury's retrograde. And this is usually the point where we have our like aha moment, right? We had something happen in our life in December. Maybe it was a contract, a conversation, Mercury, um, something that we expressed or an idea we had. And now we are reviewing and retrograding and going back over the thing that Mercury did in December now in his retrograde. And now as we get to the halfway point of his retrograde, we're starting to be like, oh my gosh, I see why that didn't work out. I see why that conversation went south. I see maybe something I didn't think about when I was creating that project, idea, proposal, whatever. And we get the aha at the Mercury Kazemi point, the halfway point, which is happening at the time of this full moon. Remember, full moon in Cancer, emotional release, emotional purge, a trigger, a something's coming up, bubbling up. Maybe this emotional bubbling up that you're feeling, this irritability, this frustration, this um, upset, this heartbreak, whatever is coming up, is helping you to think, oh my gosh, well, this is actually what I want. If this is upsetting me so much, I need to make this change. I need to have more structure. I need to have more money. I need to have more security, whatever it might be. The thoughts, Mercury, are coming up because of the emotions, the full moon in Cancer. Now remember, Mars is sinking your vitality, your chi, your stamina, your life force, so that you're not out running around distracting yourself, but you're at home, physically at home, stuck, because you're exhausted, because you're in pain, because you don't feel like doing life right now. That's okay. That is the lesson, the energetic theme of this full moon right now. So just kind of pay attention to that. Lean into that. Understand this is the cycle we're in right now. And Mercury will come out of his retrograde on January 18th. So we're getting there. And Mars is coming out of his retrograde next week on the 12th. So by the middle of January, we're actually going to feel like it's the new year. So if you've been down on yourself and you've been feeling like, oh my gosh, it's 2023. All I want to do is lay in bed. I can't come up with my goals. I don't know what I want to do for the year. I'm behind. You're not behind. Maybe you just have more planets in your birth chart affected by all this going on at the full moon than someone else in your life who is like, has all this energy. Okay. And that could be for a variety of reasons. Maybe your birth chart ruler is Mars. Maybe your birth chart ruler is Mercury. Maybe you have a Capricorn sun or moon like I do. And so you're more affected at this time. So just give yourself some grace and patience, feel your emotions, do some self-care and let this energy pass you by. Now, in addition to that, we have one other planet that's currently retrograde at the time of this full moon in Cancer, and that is Uranus. Uranus is that planet of sudden jolting change. He wants to move us into the future. He wants us to rebel and liberate and to press on forward. And he is also going to end his retrograde this month on the 22nd. Now, what does this mean for the full moon in Cancer right now? Well, Uranus, as we talked about in most of the astrology of last year, has been in a fight with dear old dad Saturn, right? They've been in a square, Uranus and Saturn in a square, and they are done. The battle is done. They are moving away from each other. They have come to a conclusion. So what does this mean? Saturn, tough love dad, disciplinarian, teach you tough lessons, tradition, structure, rules, commitment, boundaries, do the right thing. Uranus is the rebel and the revolutionary. I don't want to do it the way it's always been done. I don't want to have the same job I've always had. I don't want to be in a marriage that looks traditional. I don't want to live my life the way that I'm supposed to. I want to rebel. I want to be authentic. I want to liberate myself, take the shackles off. And now that square is moving away. Saturn is about to move into a brand new zodiac sign. After two and a half years, he's going to be entering Pisces in March. Super exciting energy for all of us. And Uranus is kind of moving through Taurus. He'll have a couple more years here. He just doesn't have to be in this constant tension or fight with Saturn anymore. That's been ongoing for over a year and a half. So we're starting to feel Uranus, our life coach planet of liberation, of freedom, of self-expression, of moving on into the future, active without the pressure of Saturn at the time of this full moon. So exciting because we feel hopeful that the next new chapter can happen. 
we just have to emotionally release. We have to Mars retrograde, stay put a little bit longer to reflect and analyze and strategize and come up with a plan. Mercury, what we want to do, what we want to accomplish. Capricorn, Mercury and Capricorn. That's what we're doing right now, okay? And Uranus is going to help us move forward because he's out of his fight with Saturn at this time. Uranus, as we can see from the chart, is at 15 degrees of Taurus. So he is in a trine to this full moon, meaning he is making a very harmonious aspect to the sun at 16 degrees of Capricorn and a harmonious aspect to the moon at 16 degrees of Cancer, since he's at 15 degrees of Taurus. Harmonious aspects help us. Squares, which Uranus was in with Saturn or oppositions, can be a little challenging. They are forcing us to make a decision on two opposing energies. But this trine of Uranus to the sun and the moon at the time of this full moon is helping us move forward to press through those uncomfortable emotions, to face them, to release them, to accept the energetic cycle we're in so that there is hope for the future so we can liberate and take the shackles off let those emotions out and flow and leave them behind ending of this full moon cycle now with that don't forget uranus brings unexpected changes shocking surprises things that happen out of the blue he is the energy of a lightning bolt or a jackhammer change and liberation so maybe around this time of this full moon an unexpected feeling comes up maybe a reaction that you have to somebody is a little over the top right? Maybe this unexpected change happens in your life and the way that you respond emotionally is something that you have to pay attention to because you didn't think you would respond that way. So just be very cautious and careful of how you feel, especially with Uranus's involvement of sudden unexpected things possibly coming up at the time of this full moon. And the last life coach planet I want to talk about at the time of this full moon really doesn't have anything to do with this full moon specifically, but it's the energy of the season we're in right now. And that is Jupiter. Jupiter moved into the zodiac sign of Aries back on December 20th. Now, this is a very exciting energy for the astrology of 2023. We're only going to get it for about five months until May. So we got to honor this and capitalize on this because Jupiter is the planet of expansion, of growth, of blessing, of prosperity, of opportunity, of teaching, of really bringing like of expansion into our life. Now, Aries is the first zodiac sign and it goes first. So now that Jupiter has moved into Aries, this is about moving forward, being the leader, being innovative, being brave, being bold, being fearless, be the leader, go, go do the things that you've been wanting to do for so long. It is really that like Nike swoosh, just do it energy. And we can see at the time of this full moon, he's at one degrees of Aries, which is the beginning of the cycle, beginning of the chart. Aries representing the astrological new year, one degree into Aries is where Jupiter is. So we are just getting started. We are just getting ready to move into that new chapter, the new energy of expansion and opportunity and blessing. And so that gives us faith and hope and optimism, which is also what Jupiter is here to give us energetically. So it's just a beautiful energy. It's running in the background. It's not directly impacting us at the time of this full moon with the emotions and the release and the Mars and the Mercury and the Uranus retrograde, but it reminds us, Jupiter is like, hey, when you're done dealing with all of that, I'm still gonna be here in Aries and we're gonna be able to expand and grow in very exciting ways. So that faith and hope and optimism is something that we feel energetically in the background, even if it's not present in this exact moment. Okay. So hopefully that helps you, helps you make sense of all of this. Um, I hope this full moon treats you well and you're able to release those emotions so that you don't have the stuck and stagnant energy in motion, emotions, and you are able to just feel lighter and freer. Okay. So with that, I'm going to leave you like I do with all my new and full moon videos with some ritual ideas that you can do around the time of this full moon in Cancer. Now remember, with new and full moons, the energy is potent for about three days before to three days after. So if you are not catching this video on January 6th, that's okay. You still have time to do your full moon in Cancer ritual. If you have your 2023 retrograde astrology journal, you're going to go ahead and open it up to the full moon in Cancer right in the beginning of the journal on page 14. You will see that I have a moon ritual listed there for you. And that is the one I mentioned about 
self-care day. This is your self-care day of the year. I want you to pack in as many self-care things that you can do in one day as possible. That might be waking up in the morning and having a beautiful cup of tea or your favorite cup of coffee. That might be going to get a massage or a facial or getting your nails done. That might be pouring yourself a bubble bath and just sitting in the bath reading a really good book. That might be giving yourself a chance to go for a walk and meditate. Whatever self-care you need today for your inner child, be your own mother and nurture yourself and pamper yourself and make yourself feel good on the inside. So that is the number one ritual you can do around the time of this full moon. And who's to say you can't have more than one self-care day around the time of this full moon, right? The second thing I would focus on around the time of this full moon in Cancer is loving conversations. Mercury is retrograde. Mars is causing us to be irritable. We have to be very cautious with our words, the things that we're saying. We're going to be more heightened in our emotions, and so are other people. As a relational astrologer, we have to remember this energy does not impact just us. It impacts everyone. So if other people in your life are feeling that way, understand and love them through it. So try, put in effort to have loving conversations, be mothering and nurturing to other people, right? Because everyone's going to feel more irritable. So have that conversation with your mom a little longer, um, your partner, your spouse, whomever. Just try to say more words of affirmation and your tone and your language in however way you can just be more loving verbally, Mercury with other people, the easier this flow is going to be. Okay. And the last and final ritual that I would do around the time of this full moon is some self nurturing. And I would use some essential oils. The moon represents that tenderness, the empathy, the sensitivity. We have that heightened sixth sense around the time of a full moon in cancer and essential oils are great energetic ways that you can shift and move your energy because right? essential oils just essentially use the vibration of that plant, the energetics of that plant to transfer that energy onto you. So if you're needing more soothing and more calming, do a lavender bath or maybe some lavender in some coconut oil and massage it onto your body. If you're needing more invigoration and more um, energy, orange and lemon and citruses really help increase the vibration. Or if you're just needing an overall level up, rose hip oil is the highest vibrational essential oil. If you're unfamiliar with essential oils, just do a quick Google search and you can learn so much about the energetics of them. And it's a great time around this full moon to incorporate essential oils into your life, whether that is diffusers or body oils or in your baths or whatever. So if you have some that have been sitting in your linen closet and you don't know what to do with them, now is the time to get them out and incorporate them into your moon ritual. So that is all I have for you today. I hope that this full moon treats you well. I hope that you get through the first two weeks of 2023 with some grace and patience and self-love. Like I said, we're not really feeling like we're wanting to jumpstart the new year and that is okay. We're gonna ease in. And by the time we get to January 22nd, we will be retrograde free for over 12 weeks. This is so exciting. That means the end of January, all of February, all of March, and pretty much all of April until the 21st of April, there will be no retrogrades. That is a green light from the universe to go ahead, run forward, do all those things that you've been Mercury retrograding thinking about, Mars retrograde, saving up your energy for. So exciting. Just wait till we get to the 22nd. Now I'll be putting out a full video on the retrograde free season, things that you can do, what the planets are going to be up to. We've got some planetary movements. We've got some eclipses. We got some new year stuff happening. I will put out a video on that very soon. So make sure you hit like and subscribe. I will be coming to you with so much more relational astrology content here in 2023, helping you understand your moon sign and how that impacts your relationships compatibility and how to find out if you are compatible with someone. I'm going to be debunking a lot of astrology myths to help you better understand astrology and actually what it means and so much more on this channel. So please like, subscribe, stay tuned. Let me know in the comments below, how are you feeling around this full moon? If you are feeling it like me, I send you a lot of love and light during this season. And also if you have not ordered your 2023 retrograde astrology journal and you want a copy, they are available for sale, just head to the description box below. You can purchase one. I will send it out to you right away. In addition, if you have purchased a 2023 retrograde astrology journal, remember you get a free ticket if you purchase it before January 10th 
to the 2023 Astro Forecast event. I host this event every single year. It is my annual astrology forecast. Not only do we talk about the major astrology, the transits, the full moons, the new moons of the year, I also kind of give you a little sneak peek on the themes, the energetics, things to be aware of, do's and don'ts, how to look in your chart for certain things that are happening this year, and so much more. I literally break down the year month by month, give you some do's and don'ts, and help you better understand what we can anticipate in the upcoming year. I will record it so the replay will be available. Um, so if you cannot attend live and you still want to purchase a ticket, I will be sending out that replay right on that evening after the event so that you will have it immediately, okay? So go ahead and reach out to me in the description box below. You can purchase a ticket or if you have any questions, just message me at the email link provided. Well, until then, I'll see you over on the Instagram at holistic.soul.sisters or on TikTok at The Relational Astrologer. I'm wishing you a very smooth emotional release full moon and cancer, and I will catch you in the next video.